Good evening, friends. Welcome to Faith Builders. This is our Wednesday evening midweek service. Blessings and I hope you've enjoyed again another beautiful hot day here in Chicago land as we are in summer here. I hope you had a blessed day. We're on fire for God and ready to go into His Word tonight. I just want to wish everyone blessings and favor as we log in. Just want to see your face and just wave in and let me know that you're here with me tonight. We have an awesome word for you. Uh, <clears throat> just excited to be in God's presence, bringing the word of God to you where you are. And so again, if you're in your car, in your home, in your basement, in your bedroom, wherever you are, uh, get to that place and let's get down to business tonight. God is going to richly bless uh, all of us. And so thank God for everyone that has been doing such a fabulous job just working together during tough times. I want to salute everyone, all leaders and those that serve in different capacities, uh, just even throughout our area, our region, our villages and cities and things that uh, we take for granted sometimes. But people are working extremely hard and so we appreciate uh, the hard work and the labor for those that are serving us as we go about our day-to-day -day activities. And so even within the church, we thank God for all of our leaders and those volunteers that serve faithfully uh, to ensure that this word comes across to you when it should, how it should, and in the spirit of excellence, even preparing to come back into the sanctuary. We're excited, guys. We are a couple of days away from coming back together. Those that would do so would love to join us. Come on out at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Listen, my friends, don't be late because we are going right in. Uh, God is going to move and uh, we're going to just be free in the presence of God. I just want to let you know we do have our protocols established. You know, we, we watch what's going on in our world. We want to make sure that, you know, you, you watch your distance. We are practicing social distance, guys, six feet apart. We are going to be uh, really, really uh, requesting that you do that. Uh, it is important uh, wear your masks. It's important that you watch what you do, watch what you say, watch where you go. Uh, it is important, guys, that we nail this thing in the bud, and we're going to do it while we're worshiping God. And so let's all come together. And let's be um, mindful of what we got to look forward to together. Amen. And so as we come back in, I'm going to remind you on Friday, uh, 11 o'clock, we are starting live, 11 a.m. Uh, we will be live streaming YouTube and Facebook Live at the same time as well on Sunday morning. And so just so you know, our services on Sunday will start live for the broadcast at 11.15. However, we'll be there in church in the sanctuary at 11, getting everything together with you guys in prayer, uh, giving last minute instructions on our protocol. But at 11.15, we will be live streaming and Facebook Live. That is important for all of my viewers who will not make it uh, out with us to worship with us. 11.15, it will, it will be a countdown. And so I hope you guys plan on joining us uh, on Sunday morning. We are definitely excited to be uh, going back into the sanctuary and at the same time we're also uh, using wisdom, making sure we watch out and, and shepherd the flock properly. Uh, that is a role of leaders. Uh, we are under shepherds and we are to watch for your souls. We are to watch for your safety. We are to watch for your well-being. And so uh, again, please follow our established protocols uh, as you come through the doors. Amen. And then we're going to have a great time together. And so blessings and favor to everyone tonight. Uh, we're going to go into our birthdays here in just a minute. Now, just give me a couple seconds to get logged in here. I just want to make sure that I cover all the ground. I'll re-announce these things at the end. But I just want to remind you, we are going back live into our sanctuary Sunday at 11. Uh, but please, 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 you know, you got our letters. We're recommending you wear your masks. You watch your social distancing. Remember those things, guys. Just wash your hands. Uh, all these protocols are in place. We got many, many safety measures in place. Uh, we're going to be free in God's presence. At the same time, we're going to respect each other. Amen. So I hope you guys are ready for the word tonight. But before we get there, uh, we want to make sure that we acknowledge just for a few moments the birthdays for this week. And so I'm looking at my calendar here. And I believe on yesterday, uh, Miss Aaliyah Patterson uh, celebrated her 18th birthday. And I, gosh, I can't believe that that young lady has turned 18 on us already. So happy birthday, Aaliyah Patterson. We are so happy and proud of the woman you become in God. I hope you had a blessed, blessed birthday uh, celebrating your number 18. Uh, I believe on tomorrow is our very own Mother Smith's birthday. Amen. We're going to celebrate Mother Smith's birthday on tomorrow. So wherever you are, if you're watching me right now, happy birthday early to you, uh, Mother Smith. God bless you. Thank you so much uh, for all that you do. Thank God. God for all of the birthdays on Saturday. We have Zoe Jones and Malik Webster that are going to be celebrating 
uh, birthdays this week. And so we thank God for our young men and women of God that are arising and doing great things. And happy birthday to Zoe and Malik and to all of our birthdays for this week. We seemingly July is a big month. I think March might be our biggest month of birthdays, but July is not too far from it, as I see. I don't know if there are any other birthdays in July that I might have missed. I will look right now at my screen just to see if you tell me that I missed the birthday. I would definitely wish that person a happy birthday. Uh, blessings and favor to all that are here on tonight. <clears throat> Amen to that. Let me make sure I didn't miss anyone's birthday. I don't believe I did. So praise God. I hope everyone is ready for the word tonight. I know I am. We're ready to go into this word and ready to hear from God. God has a tremendous word for us. And uh, I'm always excited about the word of God and things uh, we move in the, in the realm of God's spirit. And uh, I tell you what, I'm a very calm person, but the word of God moves me. When it's authentic, when it's from the heart of God, that moves me. Not many things can move me, but the spirit of the Lord and his word will move me. And I thank God for his word. And so I hope you uh, appreciate the word of God as well. And so if you're ready for the word, I know we're finishing up birthdays as I've seen them scroll down here. If you're ready for the word, I just need to see scrolling across my screen. I am ready for the word. If you could just put that on there, that way I'll begin when I know everyone is ready with me for the word of God. And uh, we just want again, happy birthday to all of my July birthdays this week. Blessings and favor to you. And don't forget, guys, we're gearing up for Sunday morning back live in our sanctuary. Uh, but don't fret. If you're uncomfortable with coming, you can still watch us Facebook Live and YouTube live streaming. Amen. And so I see it now coming across the screen. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Yep, it's coming across right now. You are ready. So I think we can shift now into the word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> Lord, your name is glorious. Your name is mighty. Lord, there's all power in your name. And so, God, we release the name of Jesus right now in the atmosphere, Lord God, to go and rest upon the people that are watching tonight, Lord God, those that we potentially watch, Lord. We thank you for your spirit, Lord God, that is moving in this hour, Lord God, uh, your quickening spirit, Lord God, your edifying spirit, Lord, your comforting spirit, Lord. We thank you right now, God, that we are geared up and in sync and ready, Lord God, to hear from you. Lord God, we just focus in, we dial in, Lord God, to our antennas of heaven so we might have a clear, Lord, reception in the spirit. Lord God, we want no uh, interference tonight, Lord God. We want the word of God rich. We want the word of God raw. We want the word of God to have its course in our life, Lord. And we thank you tonight that there are great blessings that are here right now. Father, we're walking in them. We're living blessings, Lord. We're moving blessings, Lord God. We're the great distributors of your blessings. And so, Father, uh, tonight, let our light shine. Let, Lord God, the radiance of the glory of God, Lord, penetrate in us, through us, Lord, into the community, Lord God. And, Father, we just give you glory, honor, and we thank you with all the praise in us, Lord. We give it back to you. And, Lord God, take now, God, that which we administer to you, Lord, and receive it as a sweet sacrifice, Lord God, in the heavens. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome tonight. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 8. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 8. And as you guys are watching in, you do know at the end we will share in communion as we've been doing every Wednesday, every Sunday. So if you hadn't had a chance yet to get your communion elements together uh, where you are, please do so at the end as we'll partake of the body and blood of Jesus. Amen. And those that have been with me since the inception of this stay-at-home order, we know we've been covered under the blood. Every time we come together, we are communing together. We are remembering the Lord's body and his blood. That's been important for us as we held things together. Know that here, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so we thank God for the blood that has covered us and continues to cover us. And so praise God. Matthew chapter 8, <clears throat> verse number 1. And I'm going to read verses number 1 through 4. Here's what it says. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Verse 4, and Jesus said to him, see that thou tell no one, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. 
I love that passage of scripture there, and we're going to talk about this for just a few minutes tonight. God has a word inside of this that is going to hopefully encourage us where we are. And I know that the word of God is always encouraging, but we need to take that word and break it down and now apply it to our life. And so understand the context of this setting here, and you'll get the most out of the word of God. And so Jesus, as we know, in the previous two chapters or three chapters, five, six, and seven, we understand that he had preached one of the greatest sermons ever preached and that was the sermon on the mount and one thing about the sermon on the mount is that it establishes culture i've been studying that i've been in that so much because what jesus was teaching was how the kingdom uh, was supposed to conduct business here on the earth as he was setting it up and it's key now that we need to go back to the sermon on the mount and i believe that as christians as saints if we go back to the sermon on the mount and begin to live and govern ourselves according to the kingdom mandate that jesus set in the sermon on the mount we would answer and heal a lot of these problems that we're dealing with right now there will be a lot of questions answered if we just simply go back to the word of god which jesus already established and he did that at the Sermon of the Mount. And so he spent three chapters, and you know many of those things. You talked about the Beatitudes, salt and light. He dealt with divorce. He dealt with murder. He dealt with adultery. He dealt with all these different avenues of life. Anything that pertains to culture, he was a now establishing kingdom culture, right? He knew the way life was, but he was bringing in or ushering in a new dispensation or a new time called grace under the new covenant, which would be established after he ascended back on high. But until he went back on high, he was living under the old covenant system while instituting or inserting new covenant mentality or kingdom mentality. And that teaching is one of the best teachings that you can ever get in your heart. If you understand and begin to deliver the Sermon on the Mount, you're going to see society aligned now to the kingdom of God. And so here they was now demonstrating at the Sermon of the Mount. Watch this here because we know Jesus as a lot of different things. But in this setting in the Sermon of the Mount, he was demonstrating his power and anointing to teach. He was showing that there was an anointing to teach. Just like there's an anointing to pastor, there's an anointing to, to prophecy, there's an anointing to being in the fire. He was anointed to be also a teacher. As I said before, Jesus personified all five ministry gifts. He was that all of them, perfected all of them. That's why he left them for us, because he perfected us for us to walk into them. And so in, in chapters 5 through 7, Jesus is demonstrating his anointing to teach under a different level under a different setting than what was currently being taught. And so Jesus stepped into the scene and he taught that sermon and then he shifted in chapter 8 into demonstration. Mm, this is powerful because Jesus now moves from a, a, a stage of teaching the people and, and, and multitudes are there and now he steps like he steps into a whole other day a whole nother time, and he now moves not from teaching, he's still taught, but he now moved into demonstration as well as teaching. Now, here's what I love about this motion, because sound teaching always prepares the way for demonstration and manifestation. You always need sound teaching. You need a solid foundation. You need to be able to build off of something that is not going to be moved. And Jesus took the time to teach for three chapters, kingdom principles, kingdom lifestyle, kingdom culture. And when he established that culture, when he established that lifestyle through the teaching, he now began to demonstrate. The people now were ready for the miracles. They were ready for the healings. They were ready for the signs and wonders. But note again that it was the sound teaching that laid the platform for demonstration. And, of course, manifestation. And that, my friends, is what we need today more than ever before. We need sound doctrinal teaching. We don't need philosophy. We don't need those that are just gathering pie out of the sky that sounds good and delivering to us and having first tasted or ate it of themselves. We need sound doctrine so that we can see uh, the demonstration flow from the foundation of truth with Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to pay attention to something very clear here as, as I'm going to read back in verse number one. The Bible says, and when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes. Now, it is key that we look at it because pay attention to the fact that great multitudes. Now, he didn't say multitude as just one. He said multitudes as in plural. So you could say there were, there were groups of thousands of people that flocked to Jesus just to hear his teaching. 
Now, I want to just break this down because I really get excited about sound doctrine because it's the teaching that would begin to prepare the hearts of the people to walk in faith, to believe for miracles. Now, watch this here. The people, uh, they followed him. The multitudes, they followed him, the Bible said. They followed him, watch, not because of the miracles, the healings, the signs and wonders. They followed him, according to Matthew chapter 8, they followed him because of the word that he taught. They followed him because he was teaching a word that they had never heard before. Now, they had heard the scriptures read before, but it was read in such a, a monotone voice. It was read with such um, just no enthusiasm and no passion, no power. They never heard anyone step on the scene and teach the word of God like Jesus did. They followed him. Listen, my friends, many people come to church because they want a miracle, a healing, a sign and wonder. But I come to church because I want the word. Because what I found out is I'm a word chaser and I'm training up people to be a word chaser. The other stuff will follow the word and these signs shall follow them that believe. What do we believe? We believe on the word of God. We believe in the ministry of Jesus. We believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so miracles, healings, signs and wonders. You don't come to church for that. You come for the word of God because the word of God will now prepare you for the demonstration when you will walk into the miracles, healing, signs and wonders. Those multitudes followed Jesus because he taught the word of God. Think about the word multitudes. The word multitudes simply means common or crowds of common people. Jesus taught multitudes. Jesus taught thousands of groups of people who were just common, ordinary people. It was the word that drawn them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a time where people want to dress up the word and try to present it in such a way to try to draw crowds and, and move hearts wrongfully. But God says tonight that if you just speak the raw word of God, eat the whole roll. Don't take nothing away. Don't add nothing to it. My word is forever established in your heart. People will be drawn by the word of God, not antics, not theater, not theatrics, not all these different things. Just simply bring me the word of God. If we ever need the word now, we're living in a generation and a time that we need sound preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need sound teaching of the word of God. We don't need anyone that is going to just make me emotionally high, but then I'm spiritually low. We need to be on fire for God by the word of God. Those multitudes, they traveled with Jesus just because of the word that he spoke. Now, what's the difference? We can speak the same word, can't we? Well, I'll show you a difference in a minute. But here, the word attracts common people. <clears throat> These were the common people of society that traveled, that multitude where Jesus was, right? When he came down for the mount. Well, think about this. The affluent people of that day, they didn't want no part of that. Because they felt they knew what the word says. We understand the law. And understanding the law doesn't mean that you're living the law. You can understand the rules of the road and you can still disobey the rules of the road. And so those doctors of the law, those, those Pharisaic spirits and those Sadducees and scribes and all those that were supposed to be the ones that, that thought they understood the law, they only actually were living by their own standards. And Jesus came to challenge their own standards. If you notice, Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to challenge them that added to the law things that they expected others to do that they weren't doing themselves. Jesus caught a hold of that. And Jesus said simply, the word of God need to be brought in such a way that's not added to or taken away from. So the affluent ones didn't want to get with that because Jesus came and he began to challenge and craft their life. Jesus now began to discern motives. He began to discern those that really are not word chasers. They were just ones that wanted to be chased by people. But ladies and gentlemen, I am a word chaser. And I want to raise up a generation of word chasers that are chasing after the word of God. I want to see people run through the church doors, not because of praise and worship and offering or whatever, a servant, but because of the word. I want to see people jump in and get more excited about the word of God because the word of God is the very platform that establishes everything else that comes through the body of Christ. It's the word of God. 
And so Jesus, he comes through at that Sermon of the Mount. He teaches and he comes down. And now the multitudes follow him. Why? It's because he carried a word that was on point. A word that was unique. A word that was relevant. A word that was true. A word that was established. The affluent couldn't get with that. But the common people could. Why? Because they knew Jesus' heart. Look at Luke chapter 4 verse 32. It says something important about the heart. Of the carriers of the word of God. Luke 4 32 says. And they were astonished. At his teaching. For his word was with authority. Jesus moved into the scene. With more authority. Than what people have ever seen before. Jesus was speaking words. And demons were fleeing. Jesus was speaking words and blinded eyes were being opened. Jesus was speaking words and the deaf began to hear. Jesus was just speaking just like the servant said, speak the word only. Jesus was just releasing the word of God and what was happening. Authority was established. See, my friends, I'm trying to show you that when you base your ministry, your life on the word of God, you are establishing yourself or your ministry in a position of authority. And when you move in the position of authority, you have authority to release the miracles, healing signs and wonders. You have authority to cast out devils and demons, but it must be done on the platform of the solid foundation of the truth, which is the word of God. Again, my friends, it's the word of which we need. Jesus came with some authority that they've never seen before. He didn't speak as, I believe the message Bible translated as those quibbling people that just, you know, spoke none enthusiastically. Jesus came with a passion. Jesus came with an authority because he knew that the word of God was the very word that came from his father. And the same word that spoke into existence, the world that we live in now, is the word that we're living under right now. And so Jesus took that literally said, listen, the word that I speak, their spirit and their life. And Jesus spoke that. And they were just an awestruck of how a man could come with such authority and speak with such passion and speak with such drive and motivation. That's what we need today. How dare we stand before God's people and preach the word of God in a very lackluster, non-enthusiastic type of way as though the word of God has no power. Well, turn your Bibles to the book of, you know, let's see what the Lord has to say. I, you know, I hope. Listen, we need to get more excited about what God has already said and what he's done through his word. If you ever are going to live and see the manifestation of the time of great miracles, healing signs and wonders, you got to start chasing after that word. We chase after a lot of things in life my people. You understand, we've chased after money, we've chased after jobs, we've chased after the, all these different things. Why not chase after the word of God now? Why not consume our life with the word? Well, let's move on here because Jesus, when he comes down from that mount, he has this great encounter with a leper. Hmm. I wonder was that leper was somewhere in the vicinity listening to what Jesus was saying. And when Jesus came down at that mount, here is that leper. The word drew sickness to him. Are you hearing me today, saints? The real word drew sickness to Jesus to be healed. The real word would drive those demons to Jesus to be cast out. The real word would drive people to the anointing so that they could be set free. I wonder was that God waiting, that leper, I can't wait till he comes down. I got to get to this man. I know that it's not protocol, but I've got to get to him. And so here's this leper now that Jesus has an encounter with. And it's very interesting because if you read back in the Old Testament, the Bible actually spends an entire two chapters on talking about uh, the Mosaic law uh, concerning lepers. That's in Leviticus chapter 13 and, and chapter 14. It's, it's, it's strictly given to lepers, how they associate in society, how they're dealt with once they're cleansed. They're, the whole protocols of leprosy was dealt with. And so it's interesting how important that is now And Jesus encounters a leper in his time. And we understand that lepers, guys, was, was traditionally uh, considered outcasts in society. They were not part of no dealings with the common people. 
They were to be kept to the side. They were far off. They were not to associate. They were not to engage in normal community or culture affairs. They were different according to the Levitical uh, laws in 13 and 14. There were certain parameters set up concerning the lepers and even to the point where lepers had to announce their presence when they're in the vicinity of people so that people knew that was a leper. Don't get close to them. People knew that was someone that was diseased. Don't get close to them. They had to announce that here. I want to go a little bit deeper and it's even below believe also that they had to maintain, watch this, they had to maintain a six foot distance from people. Wow. Doesn't that sound like today? Social distancing. This is not nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. They had to maintain a minimum of six foot distance between people if they were leper. Now, heaven forbid, if the wind was blowing one day, uh, it's believed that they had to have a 150 foot distance between people. But think about the world we're living in right now where we have to maintain a six foot distance or social distance. And I'm telling you, it's the, like we're living back in Bible days right now. And so I believe this here. If we're back in those days, then we got to do what Jesus did. Mm, isn't that something? And so here these lepers, uh, they were looked at as just simple outcasts of society. And when you think about lepers here, uh, really what they were called were dead men walking. And so this leper that met Jesus when he came down off the mount was literally a dead man walking but he found Jesus who was a live man willing. Oh, I'm getting excited tonight. Jesus was the live man willing and that leper was the dead man walking. So life was getting ready to encounter the spirit of death and Jesus was going to win and he wins every single time. Why? Because Jesus was willing to do it for him. I want to let you know today that Jesus is willing also to do it for you. Let's go back to our text in chapter 8. And verse number two, it says, And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hmm. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Remember, he spoke the word. Now remember, the previous three chapters, he was teaching. Now he's demonstrating. He said, listen, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Someone just shout right now, immediately it happened because Jesus was willing. I want to go back to that last statement I made to you because that was a dead man walking, but he found Jesus who was a live man willing. Have you found Jesus tonight who is a live man willing? Jesus is ready and Jesus is willing to meet you right where you are. It explains something about Jesus' heart here when I use the word willing. And one word comes to my mind when I think about the word willing. I think about humility. Humility. Humbleness. If you're watching me right now and, and you're a kingdom citizen, uh, you're a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you're a man, woman of God, it's so critically important in this hour that you remain humble. Humility. Humility is a number one key that we need in today's uh, society, especially within the confines of the church. And I, I've said this many, many times. I'm really not interested in people's opinions. Listen, I remember when I wasn't a pastor and I had many opinions about things. And when I became a pastor, I'm saying, wow, my opinion was nothing. And until you understand what it really means to stand in certain shoes, you shouldn't offer your opinions. You should offer the word of God. Mm, that is a powerful word. Because opinions can mess things up. What you think, what you're biased about, how you feel, or what you're thinking, your experience is about, that's an opinion. Now, bring the word of God that substantiates what you feel. Bring the word of God which shows that, hey, what I'm feeling is lining up with the spirit of truth and not error. That's why it's critically important that we remain humble before the Lord, guys. When we preach the word of God, listen, don't be a difficult person to get along with. Don't be a difficult person to meet with or talk with. Be a humble person that is really ready and eager to, to try to help and meet people where they are. Man, I remember those days, you know, we could sit back. I used to be on the other side of passing and it's like I always had an opinion of what we can do or what we should do. I'm like, man, I'm thinking like now, what kind of fool was I? Didn't really understand the total ramifications of what's going on, but I saw it just from my point of view. 
But you as a leader or you as an employer, you're thinking about the global view. You're thinking about a broader view. And so you're seeing things that others don't see and, and don't really understand. And so you take into consideration the thoughts and the mindsets, but ultimately you want truth. Jesus was a man. Where am I going with this? Jesus was a man of humility and truth. He didn't come with opinions. He came with the raw word of God. He didn't come with some theories. He came with the simple fact of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding him. And he went, the anointing was upon him because why? The Holy Spirit granted that upon his life. If you look at Mark chapter 10, verse 45, I'm going to show you this here. Why this is important. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Whenever you get to the place where you don't want to serve anymore, you're better than Jesus then. Hmm. And I don't know anybody that's better than Jesus. Jesus himself, he didn't come to be served. He came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That is a monumental word right there. It shows that he came to this earth willing to serve people. He came into this earth willing to put away his own opinions and adopt the opinion of his father and come in the likeness of man and humanity and deal with every temptation, test, trial, or sin that will ever come at us. He came and he served us in the spirit of truth and humility. Jesus was willing to derobe himself of divinity and come down in humanity and deal with the mess that sin had caused in the land. That's humility. Jesus was willing to come down in the face of a human being like you and I, although he was God, sitting at the right hand of his father, he came down willingly so that he can meet us where we are so we don't have to be tripped up in life any longer. My friends, he didn't have an opinion of God. He had the facts of God. He didn't come with a theory about the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Spirit. That's why, my friends, I encourage you to walk in the spirit of humility and in the spirit of truth. And when people, you know, say, well, what's your opinion? Well, really, I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm going to give you the word of God. You could call it opinion, but it's really facts from the word of God. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. This is why, my friends, we need to arm and raise up the prophetic grace in this time that is connected to God that's going to speak what God is really saying, not what the people want to hear. What is God really saying? And so when I look at these scriptures about how he just didn't come to be served, but to serve, it shows me, it confirms that he was willing. Jesus was willing. And when he confronted this leper who met him when he came down from the mount, that leper, he demonstrated something that I'll never forget. He worshiped him and he called him Lord. My friends, this is the first action step to receiving from Jesus. It's always worship. Worship. It's always worship. If you're going to get anything from God, if you're going to receive from Jesus, it's got to come through a, a position of worship. Why is that important? Because worship is actually the correct posture for the receiver. Mm. If you want to receive, then you got to assume the right posture. And the right posture is not so much as a physical position, more so than, than a, a spiritual or mindful position. Your mind has to come to a place of worship or adoration or love for God. And so this, this leper came to Jesus in a position of worship. And, and to top it off, he called him Lord, which means master or ruler. He said, listen, Jesus, I worship you. You are Lord. You are king. You are God. You are master. You are ruler. You know, this kind of blows me away because this is actually the first use of the word Jesus being called Lord in his ministry. And think who it came from. It didn't come from those who were whole. It didn't come from those who were praising God. It came from a leper who wasn't even supposed to get close to Jesus. Hmm. Isn't that interesting, my friends? Jesus received the worship of a leper. And that leper, in turn, referred to him as Lord. The first time he's called Lord in his ministry, coming from a leper, an outcast. My friends, he came and he came to Jesus and he said, wilt thou make me clean? Will you make me clean? Will you make me clean? He said, listen, will you? Now think about this statement here. This was not a question about Jesus's ability. It was a question about his willingness. 
Here that leper knew who Jesus was. And so knowing who Jesus is, now he just said, are you willing to do it for me, Jesus? Are you willing to come down and make time for me, Jesus? Are you willing to stop in your busy schedule and look upon a leper who actually is not supposed to be in near as, to you as far as six feet? But I'm here. I'm breaking protocol. I'm breaking tradition. I'm breaking what should be because, Jesus, I need a touch from you. This is interesting because we have this leper who came to Jesus and Jesus was saying, yes, I will be thou cleansed. Maybe you have in your heart today that same thought. You know the ability. Now, I know, we know, you know that God can do anything but fail. You know God is good. You know, you said it all the time. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We confess that as, as Christian robots. We got that in our repertoire, boy. We got the Christian slang and the jargon down pat. We got words for everything. I'm blessed. Yep, yep, I'm blessed. Yep, I'm good. Yes, praise God. God is good. Oh, I mean, there, when blessings go up, praises come down. Praises go up, blessings come down. We got all these sayings lined up. But sometimes we can know the right thing to say and still not get it activated in our life. I'm telling you today that there are many people that feel the same way. Sometimes we feel like, God, why won't you do it for me? I know you can heal. I know that you can, you can save. I know that you can deliver. I know that you're able to do all these things, but why is it not working for me right now? Sometimes there's a waiting period that begins to test our faith. And don't worry about your faith being tested because it's bringing out the purity of who you are as a son or daughter of God. And so if you want to develop any type of purity in the body of Christ, then you're going to have to go through some faith fires. If your fire, if your faith cannot be tested by fire, then we don't know of what validity that it really is. If your faith cannot be tested by fire, we don't know how you're going to stand really in that day of true adversity. Are you going to fold or are you going to go forward? And so here's this leper who now is at the point of life and death. And I imagine he's thinking like now, man, I've got nothing to lose. I'm a dead man walking anyway. And I've just encountered a man, Jesus, who is a live man willing. And so I'm just going to go to him and listen. If, if, if this fails, then I just go back to my life as normal. But listen, perhaps this thing is going to work out for me. Perhaps this is the day. Perhaps this is the moment I'm talking to you right now. Perhaps you're the one that's sitting there watching me and you understand and you come to know that God, Jesus himself, he stepped down here and he fulfilled law and he made a law better in an age old uh, concerning leprosy type situation. Will he not do it for us right now? Jesus came down and dealt with the law, making it better for us on better terms, on better principles. He established it through his blood. And so he did it for the leper there, saying that I want to do it for you right now. My thought for you today is simply this here. Jesus is willing. Jesus is willing right now. And when I look at this scripture here about this leper, he said, will thou make me, make me whole or will I be cleansed? He asked him not only for healing, but he asked him to be cleansed. I'm not telling you something that is not in the word of God here. Sometimes we ask God, heal me. But this leper knew enough that Jesus was a healer. Jesus can heal. But can you cleanse me today? Can you wash me and make me whole? Can you take me from this unrighteous position and place me in the position of righteousness through your blood? See, understand here that leprosy was... Was symbolic of sin. Anyone that was leopard, le considered a leopard, was considered to be of a great sin. And so he said, listen, I just don't need to be healed. I need to be cleansed. And I'm talking to someone today that you just don't need to be healed. You also need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You need it. Why? Because Jesus is willing to cleanse you. Jesus is willing right now to come right where you are. For someone today that's watching me under the sound of my voice, I come to let you know that you Yes, he has all power. He has all ability. Yes, we agree that he is great and greatly to be praised. Yes, we agree that there is none like him in all heaven and earth. Yes, we agree that he's the Alpha and the Omega. Yes, we agree that he's beginning and the end. And yes, we agree he's the first and the last. Yes, we agree that he is the great I am. But now you're saying, why is it not happening to me? I'm telling you that he is willing right now because he is the great I am. Jesus said, I'm willing to come right where you are today. I'm willing to meet you in that place of adversity. I'm willing to heal you 
of that disease and that sickness in your body. I'm willing to turn your life around. I'm willing to restore the joy back unto you. I'm willing to restore the fortunes that you have lost. I'm willing to return your life around. I'm willing to turn your marriage around. I'm willing to turn your economic situation around. I'm willing if you just receive me right now in an attitude and a posture of worship like the leper did. Jesus said, I'm willing to come right now and be cleansed and behold, not just healed, but be cleansed and thoroughly purged from all sin in your life, all unrighteousness in your life. He is willing today to come where you are, my friends. And he is willing not only to raise you up, but he is willing to set you on high places right now. He is willing to seat you right where he is at the right hand of the Father. He is willing to take what was once wretched and undone and dust it off and make it pure gold. He is willing to transform you by the renewing of your mind. He is willing today to raise you up and to turn you around. He is willing to give you a life that you never thought that you could ever live. Will you trust him like the leper did? It took the most extreme experience to show us the reality that if Jesus did it for a leper, why would not Jesus do it for us under the dispensation of grace? You know if he was willing then, he's got to be willing right now. Would you just test and try Jesus and know that he is willing right now to meet you where you are? He is willing to do it if you're willing to step out on faith. I'm telling you, it's going to take a mutual effort of both parties combined. When you will, he wills. When you move, he's moving. Moving. When you go forward, he's going forward. God is willing right now to touch your life. Would you receive it? Would you believe it right now? I don't know about you, but I believe it. Thank God, Jesus, that you are willing to deal with this earth right now. Ah, man, I, I've got to end, but I've got so much in me. I'm telling you how powerful this word is because Jesus is showing me I'm willing to turn this world upside down right now. I'm willing to resurrect the real church right now. I'm willing to restore faith back where it should be in the house of God. I'm willing to turn governments around. I'm willing to turn the economy. I'm willing to do it if someone had just dared me and believed in a step out on faith. I'm willing. I'm willing. Can you hear the voice of the Lord saying that tonight to us? I'm willing if you just simply move forward. You understand how this happened for the leper? Jesus has spent three chapters teaching, establishing concrete, firm, foundational truth about kingdom culture. And then he stepped into the portal now of demonstration. Don't you know after tonight, I'm teaching you, you could step right into the mode of demonstration. As I've taught you tonight, you can step in that mode because you're on a solid foundation. If you're willing and obedient, the Bible said you're going to eat the good of the land. Land. Why? Because Jesus is willing. God is willing. And if you're willing, let's eat good, tonight, saints. If you're willing, let's eat good for the rest of our time on this earth. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to beg for bread, right? Because David said those words. I once was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor my seed or his seed begging for bread. That's important, guys. God is willing to do it if you're willing to get up and go for it. I don't know about you, but I have a willingness, a willingness, because God is willing. Jesus is willing. Would you step out tonight with me and go forward? Are you willing tonight? Are you willing tonight? My friends, if this word is blessed and resonated with you, I want to just pray with you right now. And even after I'm finished praying, I need you to call in for our, our virtual altar. There are people that are waiting to pray for you. We need to come into agreement right now with willing souls. Those that are willing to be a part of prayer, God is willing to meet your need tonight. Oh, I feel that in the realm of God's spirit. He is willing right now to meet that need if you're willing to simply pray. If you're willing to simply sacrifice a few moments of your time to get in on that prayer line and get into prayer, God is willing to meet you there. Guys, it's going to take a step of faith, which is a sacrifice for many of us that's got to step beyond our comfort zones. And I'm going to pray that tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we already know that you're willing to meet every need. We already know that you're willing to raise us up. God, tonight, we want to come to you as willing servants, Lord God. Lord, we want to press in, tap into your anointing tonight, Lord God. We receive your word on tonight, Lord God. We know that your word is forever established. Your word is foundation. Your word is truth. Your word never returns back void. And so, God, we are standing on your word tonight. Lord, release demonstration in this hour. 
manifestation, Lord God. Let it be seen, Lord God, because the word is what we're standing on. And Father, tonight we are encouraged to pray, to seek you, Lord God, to step out, Lord God, in faith and believe you for greater things. Father, tonight we thank you again that your willingness is just not for this moment. Your willingness is there until Jesus comes back for the church. And so, God, we step into this new portal tonight of a willing father that has willing sons and daughters that are going to step up, step in, and go forward in you. But, God, I thank you for that renewed passion tonight. Thank you for that renewed zeal tonight. God, as we continue to go forward in you, God, I pray that every need is met, superseded, in Jesus' name. And, God, we thank you. Amen. Mm. If you're a sinner or a backslider, if you don't know Jesus, I take this moment to invite you to receive him into your life. This is the perfect time. This is the perfect moment for you to make a life-changing decision right where you are. Hmm, why do we preach? Why do we teach? Why do we do all this? So that souls can come in. So that souls can be transformed. So that we can see the moves of God happening right before our eyes. If that's you tonight, my friends, if you're looking at this camera, I just need you to say, Lord, forgive me. We don't need to go through this long, drawn-out thing that makes you feel like the biggest hypocrite or the biggest sinner in the world. Listen, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thanks be unto God who gave us the victory through Jesus Christ. And so, my friend, you just simply say right now from your heart, not your lips, but from your heart, Lord, forgive me. Come into my life right now. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, my God. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that you, God, raised Jesus from the dead. And today, I am saved. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, God, for saving me in Jesus' name. My friend, if you pray that, just lift up your hands where you are because the Holy Spirit is there. And we want to pray right now for a baptism in the Holy Spirit right where you are. And even beyond this and this simple prayer, you call into this prayer line as well and you let them know you just received Christ and that, that baptism in God's Spirit and you want to be prayed for. But Father, I thank you right now that the Holy Spirit is upon that man, that woman, that child. God, you're baptizing them in fire with the manifestations that are coming forth, Lord God. Lord of tongues, of gifts, of fruit. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that Holy Spirit, you're taking residence in that heart. You will guide them. You will lead them into all truth. Holy Spirit, you take authority now and you lead them. You comfort them. You guide them. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, if you prayed that prayer and you want to be a part of prayer, even if you're already saved, but you want to agree, you might have a request and you just want to come into agreement in prayer tonight. Our virtual altar, there are waiting for you when I finish up here right now. That number's at the bottom of the screen. I'll tell it to you. It's 701-802-5269. 701-802-5269. The access code is 371-0737. Again, 3710737. Let's make purposeful time of this prayer in the virtual altar. Amen. God, I hope you received that word tonight. It was rich from the bank of heaven. And I love to seal it now with the body and the blood of Jesus. Mm, the covering, the keeping power. Amen. That shedding of blood now covers me. Just like it covered in the days of Egyptian bondage and they were free from the Egyptian exile, now the blood has freed us from that penalty and reign of sin in our life. I want you to get the body together and we're going to share that at one time here. Praise God for the word tonight. I hope that you were thoroughly blessed and enriched by it as I was. We're going to take this bread and as Jesus did, we're going to break it. And we're going to say, God, I thank you. Thank you that you were broken, Jesus so that I can be made whole. Now, my friends, I want you to take and eat. This is the Lord's body. Praise God. Mm. 
we have the cup. You know, the cup represents the blood. You know, and every time we take this cup, I'm just reminded of my position, redeemed, restored, renewed, saved. Amen. And so with this cup in our hand, it represents the blood that was shed. The awesome blood of Jesus that covered past, present, and future sins once and for all. No other atonement is needed. No need to go back to the cross. Jesus paid for it all. So my friends, I want you to take and drink all of it as a New Testament of his blood. Praise God. Man, this is powerful. You know, as we say, as often as we eat this bread, we drink the cup, we show forth his death, which is victory. We show forth his victory till he come. Wow. Praise God for the word tonight. Thank God for you guys. Praise God for you listening in. I hope that you were encouraged. Jesus is willing. Are you willing? Are you willing to take that step? Are you willing to move forward? Are you willing to move into what God has for you? My friends, let's move in there together. Let's rejoice together. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone out Sunday, as many as that want to come. Again, you know, you received our letter and understand our protocols and just making sure as you enter into the to the building, there will be two check stations there. You'll be able to pick up your bulletin. Uh, if you want your temperature check, we got a temperature check station right there. We got masks available if you don't have a mask. We want to make sure that you feel comfortable in the house. You know, you, we got a second check station where we have a gift for you and you can pick up your communion for that day. Uh, we're going to just have a joyful time in God. Amen. Man, it's going to be exciting just to see everyone. Uh, just to re reiterate, we are practicing our social distancing. So, unfortunately, you know, instead of the hugs and the handshakes and all that, it's just going to be a turnaround and smile. The smile is going to be the hug. The smile is going to be the handshake. The smile is going to be all that we used to do. And don't worry, there will be a time we'll be gathered back in total close fellowship again. But now we have to protect each other. Look out for one another. This is our Christian responsibility as well, my friends. Let's look out for each other. Let's take care of one another. So I hope you were blessed by the word tonight. If you're preparing your heart to give, I want to bless your seed. Amen. I always take the time on our Wednesdays and Sundays to just bless our faithful givers as you guys um, do so much. And we appreciate how you support the church and support the work of the ministry. Uh, this is not easy. This is a complex job uh, that we do, and we uh, want to do it well for the kingdom of God. And so thank you for your support. And I want to elevate this and in uh, symbolic of blessing everyone's seed that they're giving tonight. And so you want to raise yours together with me, you can. Father, I thank you. Lord God, that your word has gone forth. Lord, the power of the almighty God surely is resting in this place and is resting in the homes of where people are watching right now. With this seed that we have elevated, Lord God, we thank you uh, for the ability to sow into your kingdom. Lord, we thank you that you love God, a cheerful giver. You love, Lord God, those who are excited, those who take joy in giving, those, Lord God, who consider it an honor to give as we do. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord God. We ask special blessings upon your people. Lord, as we just want to sow, as we want to bless, Lord God, we want to touch lives across the globe. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to share in your ministry. And Lord God, I just pray you would continue to bless. You would continue to meet every need, Lord God, of your faithful people, Lord God. You will continue to overshadow them, Lord God, with great favor in their life. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, I've enjoyed you tonight. I've enjoyed you watching me. I can't see you, but you can see me. That's not fair, but that's all right. Thank God for you guys. I'm going to be back with you Friday. Friday at 6. We have our prayer and devotion time. We're going to continue in our talk. We're going to talk about the word world on, on Friday from Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, 16, 17. We're going to talk about the going into the world as we talked about nations, the gospel reaching the nations on Tuesday. So we're going to stretch that further. we got a job to do, and I'm arming the kingdom here at Faith Walk to do the work of God. Amen. It's a different church. It's a different way than what we've been uh, doing over the years. God is bringing us back. To what he wants us to do and so remember guys the prayer line will be open as soon as i finish please call in don't let the momentum stop guys if he's willing you got to be willing willing to seek his face willing to worship willing to pray 701-802-5269 right 
371-0737 is the access code. We're praying tonight. We'll be back in prayer tomorrow night at 8. There'll be another prayer host tomorrow at 8. So you can even call in tomorrow too. We believe that we need to keep the prayer walls going, the prayer fire going all the time. As I've often said this, the devil don't take breaks. He don't take holidays. And we can't afford to fall asleep now. Amen. We've got to be wide awake. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast this evening. I hope you're blessed to share it with someone. Tell them, listen, you missed the word tonight if they didn't see it, but they have an opportunity to view it again. And so I'll see you guys Friday at 6 p.m. Now as we depart from this place, let us not depart from your presence, but let us leave confessing that we're blessed we're prosperous, we're healthy, and we're wealthy. And all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you Friday at 6.